welcome back friends in this video tutorial we'll be talking about optogenetics in a very very little amount so what is optogenetics that's why i'm making this video optogenetics is one of the most fascinating uh, neuroscience branches that are available right now so if you want to pursue your uh, phd degree in neurosciences you can choose optogenetics because it's remarkable and it's freaking awesome so i'm telling you what is optogenetics actually uh, genetics is obviously has something to do, deal with this the idea behind optogenetics is very very simple though you know there are different ion channels that are present in our cell membrane right different types of ion channels some opens on the presence of binding atp some opens in presence of calcium some opens in presence of chlorine some opens in presence of a voltage some opens and close in the presence of light right now the idea here in case of optogenetics is with those ion channels that are present in our membrane or in different examples of bacteria as well as eukaryotes which usually opens by the detection of light because those proteins can sense can sense the presence of light right so that is the important feature the protein is light sensitive in nature so once light is there a particular wavelength of light a particular color visualize because different wavelength are different kind of color we all know that so a particular wavelength of light when it is interacting with the channel with that protein that channel remains open sometimes then the channel can be closed due to this process and we know if we look at a cell membrane with multiple ion channels and they are getting open and closed in different rates it will change the membrane potential right membrane potential is extremely important for the transmission of neural impulse that we know that the nerve impulse is nothing but depolarization and polarization of cell membrane in neuron that's everything about it the beauty of nerve impulses and everything that we see everything the way i'm explaining this the way you're hearing this everything going on in our bra brain everything is interaction and all these things that in our brain of understanding things all of them hyperpolarization hypopolarization of the brain neural cells and that's how it controls now the thing is there are voltage gated channels there are light sensitive channels present in our brain present in other brains like mammals like cats rats or whatever so what we can do here is that we can take we can modify genetically we can genetically modify certain sections of the brain let's say we take a we take a rat and we genetically modify a certain section of that rat brain that we want to study with more of a, all these light sensitive proteins light sensitive channel proteins they are called as a rhodopsin we all know that example channel rhodopsin halo rhodopsin i am writing these names channel rhodopsin halorhodopsin these are the different examples of those light sensitive proteins but we make them light sensitive more by genetical alteration of the brain cells so once we alter them and we make them light sensitive of a particular wavelength we treat it by genetically modify it genetically because we can do that we can play god nowadays so that's what we use in this case but after that remember once we modify those proteins those proteins are present now what we can do from outside we can just apply a particular wavelength of light in a fraction of time very very fraction of time in milliseconds in very minute volt like 20 volt or something in very minute volt in very millisecond in some millimeter length of a cell membrane and what it can do is that it can trigger a specific response between those neurons and the thing is we can control those response with light so let's say we know this is the neuron this is the part of the brain which helps in walking let's say for a rat that part of the brain helps in walking so let me draw it rat brain for example let's say small part this is the part let's say this is the part i'm arbitrarily drawing i'm not explaining anything here this is the part for example is related with walking of the rat 
and what we do we are triggering we are triggering here with different wavelength of light we genetically modified those cells out there now we apply some light a particular wavelength there and after this we just shift this wavelength with different kind of light and we can control the movement of rat there so the thing is why it is fascinating because we are applying this knowledge directly to a living individual to a living organism we can control its behavior by simply applying some light of a particular wavelength and that's remarkable they are now just toys to us we can control them from here we have a let's say we have a uh, filled with in, in our lab we have a, a full of let's say 50 different rats out there and we have them we are giving them something in a in a region we want them to walk according to our way we can trigger it with light and we can we can control their behavior there because we are controlling we are taking the control over their brain with this process so the idea can be limitless so the applications for this process is limitless I can, can you imagine someone can control your brain literally in this case they can control your brain but only with simple light we put some electrode out there we just put some light out there and it's done that is called optogenetics we use light to modify or sensitize a particular type of protein which are being sensitive uh, to those lights and we can control the movement or the behavior of those individual by applying some light right though this optogenetics is a very vast i mean it's growing science field but it's still in an earlier stage because everything is developing over the time and now the importance of this feature is that the neural thought, thought processes and, and describing the neural thought processes probably will be the one of the most in, interesting discoveries of uh, the mankind in the decades now for understanding that previously what techniques we have we can simply take the mutation scheme loss of function mutation for a neuron or a cell or gain of function to finally check what is the function of a neuron or something but now we can operate in different field of of the brain to check what function they actually play let's say we don't know what this portion of this red brain is doing we apply that particular wavelength of light and we see they don't they are not eating anymore they are not eating anymore when we apply that light source and when we remove it then they become hungry so what we can tell this is the part which indicates that rat that to feel hungry or something so simply this is an example i'm telling you we can get this idea of different regions of the brain we can map the brain properly and the most important thing is we can map this very very fast I mean you don't need anything else there because all those loss of function mutation and all these things they are time consuming we need to kill that patient we need to kill that organism take out the brain and check all these things and all these things and also all the stuffs usually take one month or two months or so but this technique is very prompt we can simply monitor this applications and actions in real time in a monitor screen it's a huge advancement over the past 10 years right this is this is a huge huge field and the idea here uh, if i give you a simple example the example of a nematode a simple nematode there is a worm like uh, creature there so the nematode has the tendency to move by contracting their body as well as stretching their body stretches and contracts with the time now this nematode have you know uh, in their body they have the cells and all those different uh, proteins channel proteins embedded now some of those channel proteins the example of such channel protein is called mac it's not macintosh computer but it's called mac mac is a protein right it is small yeah mac is a protein it's a light sensitive protein which helps in those contraction process now once this light sensitive protein is provided with some light there green light if we apply if we apply some green light what it does actually it inhibits inhibits the hyperpolarization 
which is required for the contraction during the movement. So once it inhibits the hyperpolarization, so there won't be any contraction and the muscles of those nematode, I mean the body of the nematode gets stretched. Okay, this is an example, simple example how, of how this thing actually works. But this research with this different wavelength of light with optogenetics is going on with rat, right? Nowadays rats and then rabbits and then there, there will be different trials and this will be extremely important for, to obtain the data very, very fast and we can do a lot of things using this technology. So if you are interested about this optogenetics after this class, I will feel proud and I will encourage you to see all those optogenetics research papers nowadays, you can get it uh, in online also. So you can check all those, if you are interested you can pursue your PhD career in this. So that's it guys, if you like the video hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and share this with your friends because sharing is always good, thank you.